Hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, it's about using Dialog, APL, and Microsoft Excel. Uh, I guess the thing that I'm aiming for today is to sort of give you an introduction uh, for those who might be interested in using these technologies together and demonstrating sort of the basic ways, you know, the basic ways you can get into using APL and Microsoft Excel together. Um, you're probably watching this because you already use APL and you know how good it is for data processing. So why do you want to talk to Microsoft Excel? Uh, the main reason is that honestly, it's so ubiquitous still uh, used in lots of different domains, uh, lots of different people use it. Um, I remember starting to learn it even in school. It's good for data entry and processing and doing graphics and lots of other things. Um, so, you know, there are lots of situations where you might either be receiving data in Excel format or wanting to interact with Excel in some way. Well, I guess if you have Excel, then, you know, why do we want APL? Well, you'll know that it's great for data processing, uh, especially arrays. And the APL array model um, fits quite nicely with spreadsheets, right? So a spreadsheet itself definitely looks like a matrix, uh, but also even a, a workbook, a collection of spreadsheets can be thought of like a three-dimensional array, for example. So I've read um, some of the documentation and Richard Proctor's excellent uh, tutorial document from some workshops he's done. Um, and I've tried to simplify what I saw down to um, what I'm calling these four modes of operation. Uh, and these are ways of interacting with Microsoft Excel things. Um, and even though I tried to boil it down to four things, as it were, it still ended up being, it's quite a lot of content. So for the best part of this hour, um, you're going to watch me demonstrate interacting with Microsoft Excel and Excel files using Dialog APL. Um, so for the most part, you can watch me demonstrate these things. But if you happen to be watching live on Dialog.tv, there is a chat box down below. Uh, Adam is in there. and he will uh, relay your questions. He has a question already. Will this work with Excel of Mac OS, as in the OLE stuff? The uh, dialogue in Excel into processing in the second half of the webinar, I'm doing all in um, Microsoft Windows, and I have not tested it and don't know if it will work with Mac OS. However, the first part, uh, reading files and writing to files using dialogue, um, as of very recently, will work on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So the first part uh, is cross-platform. So it doesn't you know, matter if you have Excel installed uh, where your dialog application is running. You can still um, handle Excel files. But I don't know if the interop uh, interprocessing will work with Excel on Mac OS. I'll have to find out and put it in the description or comments or something later. I think, yes, to start with, okay, let's put the tiniest piece of context here. Imagine your application um, is a dialog application written in APL and it can be acquiring data from all kinds of places from the internet, or perhaps you're reading from databases or files, or you're just performing computations and you need to output that data, or someone is sending you data or you found some data that happens to be in Microsoft Excel format already. Uh, how can we read that data in, do some basic processing, and then perhaps even write that out? That's what I'm going to demonstrate first. So. 
Uh, as I said, cross-platform. So let me jump to my virtual machine here. This is a Linux virtual machine running RIDE, the remote IDE. And if we look at the version information, uh, you can see, let me know, I, I think, I hope this is big enough font. Probably scroll it one more. Um, I'm running dialogue version 18, and you can see here I have .NET 3.1.4 installed, and that's the .NET Core for Linux. The .NET Core runtime there. And that's what's allowing me, or is going to allow me to uh, read and write these Excel files with, with relative ease. Um, given that the format is, there's a sort of open specification for it, uh, I imagine you can write some .NET -less, uh, utility to do this, but .NET is what we have. Font was fine. Let's put it back. So to do this, um, I'm looking at this one folder. Uh, this one I can't increase the font, unfortunately, as easily, or at least I'm not exactly sure how. Um, and even though this is a folder on the Windows host machine, uh, we're going to be using this place as where you know we're going to be reading from book one dot xlsx and doing our data processing and writing files to the same directory so that we can see all of it happening in one place even though this first demo is happening from the linux virtual machine uh, so if i do bracket cd you can see i'm in this place which is a, a mounted virtual drive from the host machine from the windows machine uh, i think even for shls I'll show you the same files there. Uh, oh, and I've got PowerPoint open, hence the, the temporary file here. So that makes sense. So first thing I want to do is read some data in. To do this, I'm going to be using um, the Excel to APL tool from the Carlisle group. Um, now, fair warning, as of right now today, this the, the code on this repository only works on Windows with the .NET framework, but I've made a fork, um, which I'll give you a link to at the end, and that has uh, some updates which allow it to work on version Dialog version 18 using the .NET Core bridge uh, coming in version 18. And soon enough, I think I'll, I either have or will submit a pull request, uh, and that code can go into the main project. So to the virtual machine. I want to start by um, bringing in the code for Excel to APL. It's an Acre project, so if you're using Acre Desktop, you can use their user commands to load the project to open it up. But just for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to use link import Excel to APL, if I can type. And I think I know the path, GitHub, Excel to APL Apple source. The APL source. So now we have that in the Excel to APL namespace. Um, I'm also going to copy some functions in uh, from another workspace where I've pre prepared some functions. We have the APL OLE namespace, which you'll find out why it's named that soon enough. Um, Excel to APL is what I've just imported. And then I also have this cover function called import sheets, which simply just calls two functions from Excel to APL um, using a write argument of a file path. And uh, it will bring in the sheet data into the workspace. So if I say my sheet gets and name was book1.xlsx, with any luck, there it goes. Um, and if I look at sheet1.data, you can see I have, uh, there, to be fair, there is only one sheet in that book. Um, but yeah, you can see it's imported it as an inverted table uh, instead of a nested matrix or something, um, because that's a bit more efficient in space, but you just need to be aware of it when you want to handle the data. So now let's do some uh, incredibly arbitrary data processing. So if you look in my APL OLE namespace, um, 
The two main functions that we're just going to use are just primes and just vowels. So you'll see what they do now. First thing I can do is get the primes. I think this works. Just primes. We want the first and we'll need to execute because um, APL, sorry, XL to APL, the uh, Carlyle group utility function, um, reads the data in as a inverted table, but all the data is character data by default. In, in fact, yeah, it, it gets imported as character data and it's up to the user to, um, you know, decide what to do with it. So I'm going to execute each row to convert to numeric. Uh, first of sheet one dot data and in fact if I just do this oops and remember to dot into the namespace okay there we go so it's zero unless the numbers are prime that's all it does and we also want um, we want some vowels so APL OLE just vowels the second sheet one dot data. I might need to split this. Can't remember. Yes. Uh, just vowels. Table split. Right, there we go. So it's all the words from before, but now it's a nested column matrix and it's just the vowels. So if you look at our data now, all right, let's skip through this uh, slightly more boring bit. You'll see it once or twice more. We have our numbers uh, and it's gonna be best if we, it's gonna be easiest to see if we do this. Ah, I didn't call them anything. Okay, should have done that first. Numbers is uh, execute rank one, the first of sheet one dot data uh, have a look at there okay and similarly the words uh, for convenience i'm going to split those uh, to pick sheet two dot data okay so now i've got my numbers which i said i wanted to split up and table as well just for the convenience of writing it to the file in a second uh, my primes Ah, really? Interest. Oh, yep, yeah, of course. You for real? Yeah, there's numbers. I just need to table it. What a doofus. Okay, uh, and then the primes. Yep, and then. Uh, see my words, yep, and just the vowels. Okay, this is what I wanted. So, <laughs> excuse me for that mess. Um, now I've got a nested matrix, which is kind of in a format that looks a bit more Excel-ish, and this is just uh, for the sake of convenience when it comes to right now. I've, you know, I've done my data processing. I'm sure in the real world it'll be a bit more uh, useful than this. Uh, but now I want to write my file uh, and export it as Excel as well. So for this, I'm going to pop to the GitHub repository just to help re uh, just to jog my memory about the process. So including the fact that at this point it's worth mentioning uh, it's worth mentioning the object model of Excel, right? So Excel operates in the component object model. And so this is basically a way of um, exposing all the sort of methods and objects and items and uh, properties in Excel stuff um, as, you know, in an object oriented framework, which uh, other applications can access, including Dialog API. Um, so we have these concepts like a, a work book or even a collection of workbooks as an object and then within a collection of workbooks we can have a workbook and that's also an object and within workbook we can have sheets which are also objects and it's objects all the way down until we get to the ranges 
Um, and then the values inside the ranges from the APL perspective are basically going to just be arrays like all other you know, sort of data values in APL. So this is just so you know why I'm going to be creating a lot of namespaces right now. So the uh, process for using, um, and which we haven't even loaded yet, I'll do that just now, APL to Excel. So let's import APL to Excel, home, win doc, GitHub, if I can spell correctly, APL to Excel, applesauce. Okay, the process of writing an Excel file using APL to Excel is fairly straightforward. You start by creating the ranges and populating them with your data. So we'll create range one as an empty namespace. The range one value for me is going to be the two take rank one. So I'm going to take the first two columns of um, my big data munge up here. So the first two columns. And then we also specify an Excel address. So I just want it in the top left. So that's going to be A1. Now I'm going to create another range. And hopefully this whole process will seem boring to you in a moment. If not already. Dot value gets the two drop rank one of all of this stuff. So now I just want the last two columns, the words and the vowels, and make sure to have an address. This is also going to be A1 because because I intend to put it on a separate sheet so it can have that A1 address. So now I'm going to create some sheets and populate those. Once again, it's empty namespaces. Sheet one. Oh. You can't see behind the picture in picture. I had a thing for that, but I thought I would remember to change it. Okay, we're back. Um, so we've created two ranges. Uh, they have the same address, but that's because I'm going to put them into separate sheets. So the first sheet is another empty namespace. Um, that sheet's name, I'm going to call it vowels. Oh no, we're doing we're doing primes first. And the sheet one ranges is just R1. Then a second sheet, you guessed it, another empty namespace. We're going to name it this one vowels. And the ranges is just going to be range two. So if you wanted two ranges in a single namespace, you should be careful to make sure that your data um, doesn't overlap in terms of the starting address and then the shape of your overall data, which is almost definitely going to be a matrix. So now that we've created our ranges and populated some sheets, we've got the addresses and the names, which is basically the minimum requirements. If you look on the, on the GitHub uh, repository, there's documentation, you know, giving all the other fancy things you can do. Not every uh, Excel document feature is implemented as far as I'm aware, but there's lots of things that you can do. So a workbook, since it's another object, is just another empty namespace. Where we require a file name, and this is where the fun begins. So we're going to call it book1processed.xlsx. And then it's going to have some sheets, which is just sheet one, space, and sheet two stranded together. And finally, apl to excel dot main dot export the workbook object. And as if by magic, we've written uh, from a Linux virtual machine, albeit onto a Windows. Um, file system, a new Excel workbook. And I can show you this. It has two sheets, one called primes and one called vowels, and it has the data from a second ago. So there you go. Hopefully uh, it feels fairly straightforward to you know read and write 
um, APL. You know, I, I haven't had to do anything like opening it up in Excel and exporting as a CSV and then using Quad CSV. I can just use the files directly there, which is, you know, very convenient. <clears throat> so that's cross-platform um, reading and writing Excel files directly. The next uh, pair of demos, as I mentioned, is more inter interprocessing. So uh, using actual you know dialogue processes. One of them's like a, a DLL, uh, and otherwise you could have a running dialogue application. And this is using uh, something called OLE, object linking and embedding, to directly communicate um, between dialogue processes and Excel processes that are actually running. Um, you say turn on pip, but I've got a feeling. You know what? You can have you can have my face for a little bit, but I think I'm going to need to turn it off again in a second. Um, so com is the sort of framework with you know all these objects that can be uh, shared between applications, and then the method to um, communicate between processes, between applications is, is OLE. Um, so the first of these on the penultimate demo is uh, dialogue as a client. So we're going to have the dialogue session open and uh, we're going to control Microsoft Excel from inside the dialogue session. So in this case, let's, we're going to use 17.1 for this. It's Windows using the .NET framework, or no, this is OLE. It it works in seventeen one. This is not a new feature. Uh, no, I don't want to save. Um, another thing is that the sort of typing is a little bit more fiddly, and I don't trust myself as much. So I've written a demo script um, to help me through this. I understand that uh, that can make me tempted to go very fast. Um, so I'm going to try and keep my pace. Um, just go one thing at a time. Um, I should mention one little gotcha that, that got me uh, when I started preparing this stuff and, and looking into using Excel with Dialog. On Windows 10, at least, I had um, this sort of version of Office 365 where I could go into the start menu and I could open Excel. And for all intents and purposes, I had Excel installed. Uh, I could read and write Excel files and do all the normal things. But when I tried to um, create an OLE client, it couldn't find the Excel stuff. The dialog couldn't find the Excel stuff that it needed. So it turns out, um, you need to go to office.com with your license information or log or Microsoft login and download a full version of Office uh, so that you're able to use the OLE stuff. So just uh, try and remember that because otherwise you'll spend a while wondering why it's not working as I did. Right. Um, yeah, we're about to get into covering up with my face territory. So let's go back here. Oop, didn't do that. Right, so as I said, demo script. I don't want to go too fast. Um, and also, you know, my voice is, uh, I'm using my voice a bit much. So for now. Microsoft Excel speaks for me now. That's right. If you use OLE with Excel, you don't even have to talk. Let's open Excel and connect to the workbook. Uh, so I'm connected to the workbook, but if I want to see the changes live, I need to set Excel.visible to 1. So now we can see the workbook, which is the same as before, our book 1, just as we'd read in on Linux a moment ago. Um, we have a collection of workbooks as an object in the, in the, um, in the workspace now. So 
that's how we can tell how many we've got, right, open, even if we might not be able to see them. We can refer to a sheet by name or number. So you can index into your um, collection of workbooks, either by number, I guess, depending on the order in which you opened them, but more conveniently, you can index using the name of a book. Obviously, be careful about conflicts. Let's name a sheet. Again, for convenience, uh, we can assign the references to these objects to names, just so we don't have to keep typing out these long strings of names and dots. We can count the used rows, columns and cells. So in this workbook, um, there are 16 used rows and two used columns. And between that, there's 32 used cells. That does uh, include those empty cells on the right, on the B column. So I'm supposing it keeps the whole uh, rectangular array thing, just like APL. And read the data. So this is, you know, just as easy as a moment ago. Um, take In this case, it's, you know, convenient to take the used range value two. So value two in Excel is like kind of like the raw data, as it were. The thing called value is, um, I guess a bit more complicated. It has the ability to store uh, date time formats or currency formats. Um, but APL, you know, we can't really represent those. So we just stick to the value twos. Um, and you'll also notice that those empty cells as before get imported as Oops. Okay. Someone will have to tell me how long that's been going on. I'll let's go back. Did uh, Adam can tell me whether I already read the data? Presumably you saw the rows, you know, counting the rows, columns and cells. Also, I will um, upload all of the materials from this to uh, GitHub repository after. So by tomorrow, um, the link in the what? Okay, now that's new. That's not me. That's Netto Down. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Apologies for um, this. Adam's going to update me on how far we got <laughs> before before I completely almost screwed the pooch again. Am um, I allowed to use that phrase? So, um, hopefully. We got as far as, okay, as I was saying, uh, we can count the used rows and columns and cells, and we can read the data in uh, using this value two thing. Hopefully I explained value, value two is like the raw data. Value can include date times and, uh, and currencies, uh, but APL can't really represent those. So we stick to the value twos. Um, okay, just continue. Uh, and as I said, all the materials will go on a GitHub repo, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you can go over this and, and review the stuff that I'm actually using. Blank cells become quad nulls, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we've read our data in as the numbers and words. Brilliant. Let's continue. Sorry about that. Now let's process our data. Okay, so this is using the exact same functions as before. So I copy uh, the stuff from APL Excel workspace. That's the you know exact same workspace as I was using a moment ago in Linux. Um, there's our primes. There's our just vowels. We can write our data to a new workbook. So let's do that. So it's as simple as workbooks add one, and we can even, you know, assign the references 
um, to names as we do it. So here's my new workbook that's just spawned from the ether. It has a name, it's called, I don't know if you can read that very well, Sheet 1, but we can uh, verify this. Yep, it's called Sheet 1. Um, We can also save this workbook. So now you can see the name has changed and also in my folder, I've named it book one OLE and there's book one OLE all of a sudden, very nice. Now we have two workbooks open in our workbook collection. Let's assign our new book. Did I even need to do that? Not sure. Um, and now here's the fun magic bit. We just dot into our sheets, the first sheet, sheet one, or we could, um, I believe we can refer to that by name as well, dot range, and then using Excel uh, letter number combination named ranges. So we're going to be filling A1 to D1 uh, with our header, and you just take the value to and assign values, as if by magic. Then we can also fill in the rest of our data. Super convenient. In fact, you know, I didn't even need to do two assignments there. You know, whatever's convenient for your situation, but you could even do just numbers, primes, provided that your uh, APL data is in a sort of appropriate format. So actually to demo this, I'm going to need to just fill with nonsense and then go back and fill with um, our correct data, you know. So you can do sort of uh, bulk assignments like this. It's very convenient. And finally, you know, I'm done. I want to save and close this workbook and I can email it to my friends. Um, if I use, you know, workbook.close1, then it will close and save. If I use close zero, then it closes the workbook but doesn't save and a clear workspace. All right, so that was controlling Excel from inside the dialog session. And obviously you could take all that same stuff and you know do it programmatically from inside your application or whatever you want. That's how straightforward it is. So, Finally, um, this is actually my favorite one. It's very cool. Um, it's basically writing uh, APL functions, sorry, writing Excel functions in APL, kind of. Um, let's check everything's all good. Sorry about this. Yep. Um, whoa. So the reason I think this is the coolest one is again, sort of because of my experience with Excel. So I guess we want this here. No, we don't need that yet. Um, basically dialogue allows you to, um, take a namespace containing some methods, some functions, um, and even some data, I suppose, and export it as what's called an OLE server. And oh, again, when I link to the um, documentation near the end, uh, you, you can read in there and uh, see, you know, um, a lot more of the details. I'm just going over the sort of surface stuff here. Um, but there's, you know, in process or out of process servers where I think the main advantage of an in process server, which is the one I'm going to demonstrate, the main advantage of in process is that uh, it's fast because the dialogue functions, your APL functions get loaded into the same uh, process as, you know, Excel where they're being used. Um, but out of process servers al allow you to use what's called DCOM or is that... Uh, distributed com component object model 
And that means you could have a single OLE server. So you have your APL functions in a single server, which can be accessed by several different processes or even several processes possibly over a network. So those are kind of your main considerations there. Yes, so how, how do we make such a thing? I think we can do it like this. So I've cleared my workspace, um, but one thing I will do is just copy again uh, APL Excel. So um, let's just more. okay. Um, so you know the exact same. Uh, set of functions as before. We're going to ignore import sheets. That was just for the first part. Um, but we have this o APL OLE namespace. Yep. And in there we have these functions, which I've been using, you know, just primes and just vowels to process the data. But I don't want to have to even run a, you know, a dialogue session or my dialogue application to use these. Let me use them directly from Excel itself. How do we do this? The steps are actually really straightforward. If you have such a namespace, you can do your namespace. It's because my, um, I'm really sorry about that. It's because my APL keyboard shortcuts are conflicting with my streaming shortcuts. So I'll have to sort that out for the future. So quad WC, right, we're turning our, our namespace uh, into an OLE server. Quad WC, window create, OLE server, so that's names, uh, in the namespace scope. Then we're going to save um, this workspace, aploele.dws. So that's just so that I'm not uh, muddying up my original namespace, which minus O to nine, you can see that um, creating the OLE server has injected a load of methods and stuff uh, into that namespace now. All that remains is two things, but I'm gonna pretend it's one thing until it doesn't work. File export, and then I'm going to choose in process server. Nope, not in process server, saves as a DLL. And it looks all good until it could not register in process server. And that's because you actually have to make sure to remember to start dialogue and run it as an administrator so that you have permissions. So that you have permission to uh, make changes to the registry. Yep, so don't forget to start dialog, run as administrator to make sure you have permissions to make changes to the registry. So I am going to have to once again change directory here. We can now just load APL OLE the workspace I was dealing with before um, and the namespace has still got all of our OLE server stuff inside. So now, yep, uh, as I was saying, file, export, and we want to select in process server, this DLL. Now you can see everything's green. That means good. The last thing to do is go to Excel itself. So for this, I have pre-prepared another uh, workbook called APLOLE.XLSM. And that means it contains uh, macros, which is in this case, um, VBA code. So Visual Basic for Applications. Um, what are the things to remember? Thing number one to remember is I've created this OLE server DLL, but I can't use it yet. I have to go to C in my, in the default place is C, 
program files dialog, uh, the correct version 17.1. And in the dialog installation directory, you're going to look for, um, oh, in that window where I created the DLL, in fact, I can show you again. We have this little tick box and I have runtime application ticked. And that means for me, I'm going to want the RT uh, dialog DLL. So this is dialog 17164RT Unicode from the dialog installation directory. I'm going to copy that and then pop it over here. So that's um, putting the dialog DLL in the same directory as the DLL I've just made. And the second thing to not forget is you might not by default have the developer tab in Excel. So you'll want to go to file options and then customize ribbon and make sure that in the main tabs, the developer tab is checked here. Now we can view code and this will take you to the sort of VBA editor and debugger. Um, and it will take you to a sort of a code block for just sheet, the sheet you're in. If you want to have, and this is what I wanted, hold on, let's pop these side by side, like this, like this, and we can drag, drag you across a bit. Um, I wanted the fact, so, so, you know, when you start using Excel, you learn about like equals sum one, two, three and these types of functions that you can pull from within the cells. And obviously when, you know, when you're in school learning this or wherever it's, you know, it's mysterious, it's uh, Excel code hidden within, you don't really know much about it. Maybe you learn a bit of VBA um, and then it starts to become less mysterious. If you want to create your own such functions, you want to right click, insert module. So we insert a module. And then in our module one here, this code, uh, including these functions, is now accessible from inside these Excel cells. So I've, um, you know, pre-written this stuff so far. Um, one is the echo, which is literally just returning whatever I send it, but it's sending, sending my text uh, to a dialogue process or, or to the dialogue um, OLE server that I created and you've got to give it a minute for it to wake up um, the, the first time. After that everything's instantaneous pretty much um, or as long as your actual functions take. So there we go, it's echoed my text back to me. Um, yep. And the main, and here, you know, as I said, I'll pop all of this stuff on a GitHub repo somewhere, but the main takeaways are you want to create uh, some object, which is the OLE server, and you refer to that with a string that's just dialog dot the name of the namespace that you created in dialog and exported. Um, and then you can just dot into that object to call the functions within that namespace. It's, it's actually quite easy. Um, the other annoying thing was um, I could get it working sort of as, um, you know, one number at one, one cell at a time functions fairly straightforwardly. But if you want to do the sort of the real more array stuff where you can call the function, so let's do oops, equals APL vowels. You want to call the function by clicking and dragging a range, then you need to remember to convert the values in the range into a uh, VBA array before you can send it to dialog or to your APL functions. So I've created this little utility here called range to array. It takes a range uh, and returns a variant, which is just the dynamically typed it could be an array, it could be an integer, it could be uh, a string or anything. Um, that's just convenient. And then it just populates a new actual array 
object thing with well, an array, it populates it with the values from um, the range I've selected. And this means I don't have to go equals APL vowels C2, and then in the next one C3, and then you know do the little corner click and drag. Instead, I can just select a whole range and look, you know, it, it's it's just the vowels. <laughs> um, the fact that I can you know create my own uh, Excel equals in cell equals functions um, that are written in APL, uh, that's why this this was my favorite. Uh, this is my favorite demo of them all, uh, of all the ones today. I think this is just pretty neat. Um, oh, the other thing is transpose the output so that it becomes columns. Uh, by default, my functions are returning vectors. So, just one last last thing, and I haven't seen any particular um, questions from anyone on the way, but I will leave time at the end for that. One last last thing, let's uh, create the wrapper for the primes. So this is function APL APL primes. The first time you want to case it how you want. Afterwards, uh, Microsoft takes care of the rest. So it's R as range as variant. And then we're basically going to copy all of the stuff that sets the object up and assigns the values from my range into an array because that's all going to be the same. And I'm also going to copy the transpose out part because I want I also want to return um, columns. So this will be APL primes equals this transpose. Okay, and then all I have to do is. Uh, write the function call applewuss dot just primes array. Now, with any luck, and and so um, VBA kind of compiles as you go, which sometimes when you make a typo is really annoying. Um, but when you type everything right, as I've practiced this a bit, <laughs> all I did was write that. I haven't clicked anything else, and I can do equal. APL primes, click and drag and select all my cells and press enter. Right? I don't know. I think I think it's I think it's just a tiny, <laughs> as mundane as uh, as um, you know using APL with Excel is as a topic. There's there's a there's a little bit of magic uh, in being able to do that. So yeah. So we can save all this, close everything up, all good, fine and dandy. The uh, I tell you what, um, the gods of of live demos have have shined on me today, very nicely. Uh, apart from my own fumbling around, everything everything worked. So yeah, it it is it's pretty sweet. Yeah, um, but as I say, fairly basic stuff. Um, although that does cover, I th to my mind, your, your your three main entry points. You know, you're either dealing with the files, uh, and you don't care about having Excel installed at all, or you want to control Excel from your dialog application that's running, um, or and and you can do things like writing graphs. Uh, making Excel produce graphs and stuff in that way, or you want to have your APL functions accessible from Excel. Um, that, that's how you do it. So yes, to recap, um, APL to Excel and Excel to APL are, as of now on this second repository, that's R-I-K-E-D-Y-P, um, they have some updates which allow the tool to be tools to be used uh, cross-platform. So that's Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. I cannot vouch for Raspberry Pi personally, um, but the Carlisle Group one is just .NET Framework on Windows as of right now, um, and that's you know these are the tools for handling files very easily without having Excel installed. 
and then uh, the OLE stuff. Finally, uh, yeah, let me point you to where I found out this stuff and where you can go if you want to find out more. Um, I hear there's no questions yet. That's probably fine. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it has taken up the best part of an hour showing all this. Um, so the firstly, um, the docu dialog documentation, you're going to find the Microsoft Windows installation and configuration guide useful. Um, to find out a lot of the stuff about installation directories, dialog DLLs, stuff like that. The Windows interfaces guide include and the .NET framework interface guide and coming in version 18 the comparison of .NET framework core interfaces since we will have you know the .NET core bridge which allows you to use a lot of .NET -y things uh, cross platform which is super convenient um, and then other than the so that's the main documentation and then also, um, as I mentioned right near the beginning, Richard Proctor's excellent um, workshop materials. So he's ran, he has previously run a few workshops. Um, I guess you could write VBA, I assume that's VBA, yep. Um, typo from Adam. Dialog boxes for users to enter data and then feed to an APL process. Of course you could. So. Uh, I think I have some old VBA code where, you know, the macros include a button on the sheet and you click the button and it opens a file chooser box and then you're selecting a spreadsheet and then processing some stuff. Uh, never mind, Josh answered in the chat. Um, sorry, back to, um, yeah. So from dialogue user meetings, these uh, workshops. So a lot of the stuff I've covered today or Basically, all of it is is in here, but also much, uh, much, much more, which, yeah, as I say, it's covered, you know, whole workshops before, and frankly, everything you could do could cover a week-long course, probably. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do, and it's not just Excel as well. You can interact with PowerPoint or Word. Um, frankly, that's giving me ideas, but uh, not got the time to invest right now. Um, yeah, so, so in terms of finding this, um, if you just Google charting the APL XL waters, I, I, it, well, I don't know if my search history has skewed it, but I'm pretty sure it comes up at least on the first page of Google. Um, yeah, so it's, it's easy to find. So while I wait for just the last, last call for questions, last call for questions, um, the next upcoming webinars next week, the British APL Association is having uh, another Zoom meeting, um, sort of general meeting hosted by Paul Grosvenor. And then in two weeks, Adam is back um, talking about yet more of the many brilliant language features coming in Dialog version 18. So had one a couple of weeks ago. And there's definitely another one in two weeks' time, and quite possibly maybe two more, I think, at least. Could we say four? Yeah, Ad Ad Adam can, you know, decide uh, how many. Otherwise, I want to say thank you very much for uh, watching, uh, putting up with my technical fumbling. Um, I mean, I want to say thank God the 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 demos themselves worked, um, even if my keyboard shortcuts for OBS are apparently ill-placed. Otherwise, let's get that jingle one more time, why not? Excel formula that created the data. Oops, a question. So I've been asked, can you see the Excel formula that created the data? Which data? I think I manually created, if you're asking about these workbooks, I, I manually created them myself. Like I just typed in some words and numbers for the sake of a demo. Can you clarify? 
Possibly. Can you see the Excel formula that created the data? I mean, if you're talking about the macro, then, I mean, the, the, the functions are APL functions, and the macros, the VBA is just a wrapper so that we can uh, call the functions in this way. Um, I'm not sure I fully understand question. Again, let me know. What I can do is just pop on, let me just hop on Dialogue TV myself. You know, if anyone's watching this back after the fact, um, then, uh, you, you know, you can leave. <laughs> you can leave now. Uh, I'm just waiting for questions. Yeah, okay. Alice, I'm sorry, I'm not uh I'm not a hundred percent sure what you mean by that. Oh let's say the values are results of formulas. Oh I see. I personally I suspect not. I haven't investigated. That's a really good question. If people are up for sticking around Give me a couple moments. Let me attempt to, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get what you mean now. Let's have a little look. See, so if we, what we can do is we go back here. I, gosh, it's gonna be. If anything, that'll be in like OLE documentation. So you'll have to Google stuff and probably read a lot of uh, VBA code on Stack Exchange forums to find out uh, mm. so yeah I, I know what you mean now Ellis um, what you mean is let's get through this I just want to workbook get uh, excel dot o workbook open and then it's this guy we're gonna copy that path get rid of the double quotes huh eh ah, too bad. oh sorry is it workbooks dot open yep yeah, okay and then excel dot visible is one and so here we are and what is meant is in here we could have a cell where the actual uh, value comes from equals the sum of some cells like this and the question is and i don't know the answer and i don't know that i'm going to be able to find the answer right now for you to be honest um without without googling and that's going to be boring so what I do promise is if I go away after this and actually find the answer, I will make sure that knowledge is available um, in the description of the YouTube video that this becomes and, uh, you know, find a way to let you know, Ellis. But um, so the idea is then you can do uh, workbook.sheets1. Data. No. One dot name. Yeah. Why can't I see the data? What? Something up to get us Okay. Hell, work sheet. Work sheets one. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's the yeah. Workbook. <laughs> this is why I had it as a demo before. Used range. Uh, value two. Right. Yeah. I mean, so so reading the value two, obviously not, right? Because that's just the value that's in there. But presumably. Okay. I'm willing. One quick Google. Um, VBA get formula from cell. Get formula back from cell and okay, 
So we got used range dot. Okay, there is the thing. Aha, there you go. Yes, the answer is yes, you can. It's a, it's a Christmas miracle. I just Googled it. Um, by the way, I Googled the exact term was VBA get formula from cell. And the top answer indicates that if you look in workbook, you know, in, within a sheet object, if you look in a particular range, I just used used range to get all of this. But if you look in a particular range and then do dot formula, you can indeed retrieve the formula back. So, uh, okay, well, th thanks, Josh. You look at this, look at this. I mean, I know that there's like a, a 30 second delay. I'm guessing Josh Googled it about the same time I did. Um, go away, yep. Uh, so the answer is yes, you can. Uh, any more for any more? Because otherwise, I'm uh, I'm definitely gonna have to. Uh, go on, one more. I'm hearing nothing uh, back, so I'm going to call it. Thanks very much, everyone, for watching. See you at the next ones.